Hello everybody, it's Cliffman. Welcome back to The Letter. Uh, last time we just had like this introduction. Hopefully we get to actually play the game this time. Let's continue. So we appeared at this mansion after uh, some lady told us to go there. Rose? Oh yeah, this has voice acting, doesn't it? At least I hope it does. Okay, I call out. Rose, I'm here. I'm here. Where are you? My voice echoes softly through the hallways. <clears throat> oh, who am I kidding? You know what this place looks like? It looks exactly like the place from uh, Dead Alive. You got the you got the door over there that leads to the basement, the the very left one in the back. The upstairs goes upstairs, and one of the lads on the picture look exactly like uh like uh wow, what was his name? Oh well never mind. Let's rock. In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. She could be all the way on the other side of the property for all I know. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number. But... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Please check and try again. What do you mean it has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Wrong. Or... Maybe Ghost did hear us talking and speared her away, right? I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or you, or you actually think this is true. Right? No, Isabella, don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. The number you have dialed has not... I get it. But to no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. I mean, it's it's only been a couple times, I mean... Rose? If you can hear me, please come out! Come on, Rose! This isn't funny! You know this place gives me the creeps? No answer. This isn't going to work. This place is big. She could be anywhere. Why don't you try walking around? I need to start looking for her. Yes. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple steps forward, I notice something move above the stair grand staircase. I did not see shit. What the hell? What the hell? Rose? Rose? Rose, is that you? Is that you? Not, funny. not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Out, huh? Fine. I'm going. Okay, that's a lie. She's my friend. I really can't. I, re I can't really leave until I know she's all right. Oh, okay. Come on. It's not gonna work. Okay, maybe it will work. Hello. Hello. Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond, but there's also heavy static coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't get cut off again before I get the answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? She's dead. A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. Attic. What? The attic? Why? Man, do I really need to go there? How deep inside the mansion is the attic? Or, with how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. But why is she there? I don't know, exploring. Like you should be doing. Of all, out of all the places, she just has to make me go fetch for the creepiest room of this place. How do you know that? Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever, I'll just go. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wobble as I mentally keer from the fact that I chose in a real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange abandoned houses. And then a tall 40-year-old looking man comes over. He has like a nice haircut. His nails dig into like the side of the railing. And he looks at you, he's like, Welcome to Fright Night, for real. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. 
Again, this game has really nice animation. It branches out to two major wings of the mansion, the east and the west. There are two attic two attics here? One on each side. But the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it likely for Rose to wander in there by herself. Besides, she's never did like going to stuffy storage rooms. She might not be in there in the first place. So I head toward the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to a second attic. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with thick coating of dust that kicks up to the air with every step. Thank God it's still daytime. If it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. With how old the place is, there's no light fixture to illuminate the cramped passage up. Why they didn't bother to add me here, add one here when they renovated escapes me. Sheesh, they did it. With the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end. Oh. Looks like, looks exactly as it did last time I've been here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Were you here last time? Odd. I thought they cleaned everything. And what's the point? Did the crew miss this room? Ugh. Cleaning this is the least of my concerns right now. The pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, it couldn't have been a dream. How naive are you, lady? After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job at making sure that I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before a curse got to her. Oh my. Ugh, oh, shut up, brain. You're not helping. Don't make me. Don't. Don't make me. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here. Then where is she? <coughs> Over there? What the hell was that? That's it, I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. I must have angered the spirits living here. Well, this room kinda looks calm, so I wouldn't say angered. I knew disturbing I knew disturbing this mansion was a bad idea. Oh, okay. Was a bad idea. Right from the very start. But nobody listened. Whoa. <laughs> Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm a cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. In my outlandish Blackwater country beliefs. This is Japan, right? I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time. Nope. I'm turning back from the sake of my insanity. Then go. Buyer Realty can find another agent who is fucking realistic to a tour people around this haunted house. <clears throat> Before leaving, I took one last look in this gloomy old room. Just to check. It's not gloomy. It, it looks... The, the, the sun's coming in. The dust is there. It looks fine. Huh? <clears throat> What's this? My worries about Rose's whereabouts just have caused a mist when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... A letter? Ah... Lying on the ground, just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down to pick it up. That was a slow animation. Strange, I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. Well, they didn't bother to clean it in here. I'm pretty sure they didn't even touch the room in the first place. A few days back, me and a few other agents expected the mansion f to prepare for today. I had been the last to look inside the attic and leave. This certainly has not been here before. Someone must have left it in this room since then. It's really to leave this <sighs> Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her, though. Could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic. The letter isn't exactly a pristine condition, in fact it looks rather ancient, because no one's been in this house for a minute. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried it will fall apart if, if I so much as touch it. But with great care I open it and see what, and what I read shakes me to my core. What? What? 
Oh my god. Oh no, it looks like it's Retin and Creeper. Well, I think it was called... No, Chiller. It looks like it was Retin and Chip. Rotin! Microsoft Word, alright? Nothing but the words help me fills the page. All of it. Seemingly written in a crimson shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. This is the same freeze just going on and on until... <laughs> okay. Send this to five people or else. Send this to five people or else. Or else what? Or else what? As quickly as I can, I skim the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please, no. It, it's okay. Calm down. Just search the house. I'm pretty sure they're in there. I know it's a horror game, but I like to make fun of logic a little bit. Before someone needs to freak out like this, they gotta at least, like, you know, you know, be like 100% that their friend is not there. Once they're 100% or something fucked up happens, then you can question. This girl just, like, uh, it's, like, immediate. Like, uh, if someone just doesn't immediately call, they're all of a sudden, like, Oh my, uh, uh, she might be, she might be dead already. Ah, it's like, no. Holding the paper in half, the sight that greets me, the text is has me frozen on the spot. F Uncle, F Uncle Frank? A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my vision. Covered in gaping wounds, the skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and all the manner of things I, that one isn't meant to see. It's Frank from Hellraiser. It's too much. It's all of it. All of it is too much. I wanted to cry, call for help, but the words can't uh, like catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Lord, please help me. Okay. Save. Let's go for the more interesting one. I need to face it. Whatever, whoever these feet belong to, I need to face it. And if I'm going to die, they're going to kill me. At least I need to know what the killer looks like. I, and a cold comfort. So with a deep breath, I summon every ounce of my courage to carry. Just look up. If I saw something like that, I'd jet out of there immediately. The door- the room has definitely changed. Stay away! Go away! Please, Lord! Make it go away! What? Why now? Why won't it open now? My heart sinks as reality draw, dawns, dawns in. I'm locked in. Locked in with that thing. Let me out! Let me out! Lord, please, let me out! It slowly approaches me as I wrench the doorknob violently back and forth. Oh, crap! Uh, shit! Oh! Door finally swings open. I didn't know I had to do that shit. Wasting no time, I leave it out of the door and I don't look back. My feet pound against the floor in rhythm with the loud, fast beating of my heart. By the time I run past the hallway and find myself on the top of the grand staircase, my chest feels so tight that it's going to... feels like it's going to burst. But that's nothing compared to the feeling of, of hope the sight of the exit gives me. Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me, and... <laughs> my shoe slips, and I find myself falling. Until my back hits the ground, and pain racks my body. My head goes frozen, and, and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. The last thing I see are feet before I know is darkness. Am I dead? I feel like I'm dead.
I did it, guys. I, 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 I did an ending. Too bad that the uh, video didn't want to show up. What? What is this bullshit? This is bullshit, man. What the hell's going on? All this downloading. What, what is it for? And why? This is bullshit, man. Been waiting here for two, three minutes after I paused the last time. You better be doing something. What are you doing? Uh, okay, it, it just stops now. Okay, it's it's continuing. All right, so what's the Motley Crew we got here? Continue, you bastard. We got the. Okay, I get it. We got the Cowardly Lion. We got. I don't know. Jennifer from Clock Tower. We got some chick from Sword Art Online. We got the main character, who looks like Rachel or something from uh, from Animorphs, but with brown hair. We got this guy over here with the hair thing going on that I don't know what the hell. And we got Alexis and um, um, Alexander Shepard from Resident Evil Code Veronica X. Oh, okay, 10%. We're doing this 10% shit now. I'm half tempted to. I'm 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 half tempted to, fucking, just leave the episode because I'm not dealing with this bullshit. Not now. Not ever. I start to rouse, pulled into a consciousness against my own will. I've never tried. I've felt this tired before. I just want to sleep, but the instant buzzing, poking, and prodding, isn't letting me. My own mattress may not be the comfiest of places, but that doesn't make me any more eager to wake up. Five more minutes, Becca. I sweat away at what's nudging me persistently at my side. Come on. Can I just get a few extra minutes of sleep today? I promise I'll work hard once I'm up. A hand lightly taps my cheek and something cold is suddenly being pressed in the back of my head. The icy sensation slowly spreads throughout the area, giving me an uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> the fog immediately lifts from my mind at the moment, and I recognize the voice as my eyes snap open. I don't know why I want to laugh. There, looking down on me, is Rose. Another woman loiters beside her, but my attention is too focused on the co-agent to ask even why someone else is with her. Rose's posture just screams worry, although she's keeping a straight face, or trying at least. I can't help but feel bad for making her fret. A wave of a dizziness washes over me as soon as I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down again. Luckily, the feeling subsides in a few seconds, and only after a mile throbbing somewhere in the back of my head remains. With a li assistance from Rose, I push myself upright. Little, little, little. She hands me an ice pack and gestures for me to press it where I suspect a small bump is already formed. If the light ache in the area indi it indicates anything, I got a goose. Twelve teen? Why are we doing this? She's just checking if your injury is in any way serious. This time I curiously regard the woman standing beside Rose. It's impossible to overlook her with the same way she towers over us. Well the other girl doesn't look uh, it looks like she towers over her just by a few inches. And here I thought Rose was already tall. Who is she anyway? One of the remaining cleaning cleaning crews? But Ugh, but with how primely dressed she is, I don't think anybody would want to clean to want to clean in a suit, an expensive suit that at that. The gloves alone must have already cost a fortune. 
Jeez, I don't know, the gloves. So her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an um, almost unreadable expression, before finally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over myself as she does so. She may be far from the cleaning clue, but she certainly looks like our supervisor during evaluation. How did I not know that? I eye them both warily, but recite everything as she asked. Rose releases a breath of fr <sighs> relief once I'm done. You scared me for a moment, Bear. I was about to call for an ambulance. Are you all right? Exasperation soon releases, uh, replaces the dull ache. The memory's a little fuzzy, but the attic and. If they're one of the cleaning crews, they're not really good at cleaning themselves. The boss sent a few of them back this morning for some last minute. No, not any of those. They're. Ugh. I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Really? Both Rose and the lady look at me like I'd just grown another head. Did I say something weird? Rose uh, quickly case, uh, casts an apolog apologetic smile at the woman before the awkward siren stretches on further. It's her, it's her saleswoman smile. The same one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I should show this to the troublesome clients, or just to avoid some trouble in, the gener in general, she advised. It was almost the same when she gives me, when I'm done, something particularly absurd that may cause us to lose potential sale. Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She takes both of my shoulders, gently squeezes it, as much as patience she can muster. As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know, signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really alright? What happened? I... I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you were in the attic, and, and there's, whoever it is, and I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh, oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open. We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose. Perhaps it is a concussion. Are you sure you feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. I could call for you. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait, hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an important sale because of a minor bump on the head. An extremely minor bump. I've had worse when I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also a part where I may lose the bonus BRC promise, but that's completely beside the point. Rose gives me a skeptical look when I return the cold compress to her and push myself off the floor. I have to use the staircase's railings to study myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A-OK. -okay. The two of them exchange a worried glance and Rose assumes a comprehensive, a, com a contemplative look. I bite my lower lip in anticipation if she says no. I a smile threads to slip me. If I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay. And we're off. No questions asked. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. Suddenly, a small cough against the walls of the foyer interrupting our banter. The woman's looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little bit on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is, but not a scary and negative way. Far from it, actually. Her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me would have probably been wished to be like her. 
Our lack of response, she coughs again and a well-trimmed eyebrow in the, at me in the question. Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, as Rose as usual and Rose as usual is swift to catch my my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. Thanks. X mail, huh? The words interior designer catch my eyes before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably someone interested in a mansion for its 17th century influences then. I won't hold it against her, though. Despite the hearsays and remaining uninhibited for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture might have been completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose that some people find the trip to the past feeling appealing after all what it offers is just a place to go be having for a people looking for a classic historical charm. <laughs> Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could, please. Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. We're just confused as impossible to miss when she glances down at me. And I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? Homeowners insurance. Beavis butthead joke. I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but it instantly disappears under the mask of professional detachment. Yes. Kind of right? I was hired by her to handle the interior design for their newly bought home. This is the Ermengarde Mansion, right? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to feel the awkward situation without offending someone. Rove nudges me in the elbow. Those, feel, those few moments have been giving me enough time to clear my head on the nervousness, confusion, It is, ma'am, but we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I must flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand on my ground. Besides, I haven't dealt with awkward situations like that before. Blah, blah, blah. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. If you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. You can read that. Something looked odd when I arrived here. Excuse me, I think I need to make a call to my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. Oh, she just dematerializes in there. With a slight of wave in her hand, she leaves us. And that seems to be the end of it. But we're, well, disaster averted. Sigh of relief. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job. And I can't help but swell with pride. She, uh, still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number of our Luxborn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. This has gone on way too long, I'm going to save. And that's that. This is more of the letter. Lots of exposition, man. I mean, I can, I can only do so much before saving. These are going to be long episodes, I tell you. Oh, fuck. It's going to be some, some, like, weird, manly, badass hero kind of, like, length videos. This thing, they need to, these people don't, I mean, the the acting, the voice acting's pretty good. Uh, my main character's situation, I don't really like the way she thinks a lot, because it's very, like, you know, paranoid and fast, and it, it just, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's something. I just wish there wasn't too much dialogue. And, uh, I mean, the go the game looks like it's executed well. I guess I have to, it, it is only just the beginning. So, till then, guys, thank you all very much for watching. Um, hopefully this has been a good experience for you guys, I guess, I hope. And, yeah, there's nothing more I can say to this. We actually found some horror in this game with a bunch of story, which is good, but you know what I mean. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen.